Okay, this is a follow-up video to our unbalanced forces that we looked at the other day. And if you remember, we had made this little pipe cleaner apparatus that had paper clips on it. And the challenge was to try to get the point to balance on our finger. And we can't get the point to balance on our finger, and I want to kind of talk about that, because we have gravity pulling down on this. And because it has the tendency to want to go any possible direction as a result of gravity just kind of yanking it down to earth, it has the ability to fall left, right, forward, backwards, all these different directions because the center point on this is really kind of unbalanced in regard to the way this thing could fall. Okay? So essentially what we had to do was bend the legs over. And the reason we did this is because now when we have them bent over, what happens is there's no more way for these paper clips to want to fall over the mass on the edges. They're at their lowest point. And if you notice, they're actually below the center point of my finger. So what's interesting about that is now they can just kind of rock back and forth. It's kind of like a balance, like a teeter-totter. There's actually a pivot point at that, at that point, kind of like a teeter-totter rest on that fulcrum. So essentially what happens is we have gravity pulling down, but yet my finger is the normal force resisting the downward gravity. So it's actually pushing up on the center point allowing it to balance perfectly. And so that's essentially what happened there. So we do have equal forces. They are balanced, not unbalanced, as in the previous demonstration when everything was up. Everything was unbalanced. But right now we have balanced forces and it can remain at rest. Okay? Uh, now we're going to kind of rearrange the camera. We're going to look at a couple of things that will demonstrate some other physics in action. And uh, then at the end of the video we're going to look at some of the kids uh, in my class that are doing static can races and that'll be kind of an interesting video to watch. So watch this all the way through and uh, we'll rearrange the camera right now and look at some other demonstrations of some forces. Okay? Okay, in this demonstration what I've done is I've taken a balloon and aired it up. Along my wall from one side of the room to the other I've hung this uh, fishing line and I've put a straw on the fishing line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the balloon which if you understand the way the balloon works is basically you have a lot of resistance so you have this force that is wanting to push the balloon back to its normal shape because it is elastic or latex and so it's wanting to compress and go back to its original form as it stretches out and so the air pressure inside is pushing the balloon open and pushing the material and elastic uh, part of the material outward and so you have all these forces at play here you have the inward force of air coming trying to push the balloon bigger and then you have the balloon's force or the latex wishing to compress the balloon. So as I release it, of course you know the air is going to be pushed out just like a jet rocket. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see how this demonstrates uh, Newton's third law which is equal and opposite, which is for every, uh, for every um, action force there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So I'm going to take this balloon and we're going to tape it right here. Another piece of tape right here. And so we're making sure that it's nice and secure and that the end of the balloon is right here. Now I'm going to pause the video in just a second. Uh, we're going to uh, re re uh, kind of rearrange the camera angle so that you guys can see this uh, as it expels the gas out, out of the balloon as it shoots up the line, okay? Okay, here we go. We're going to watch this uh, balloon take off. So I'm going to release it. Okay, essentially what happened in that particular shot was that the balloon, as the outward pressure of the balloon pushing inward, uh, shot the gas in the backwards direction, the balloon flew the other direction. So it was an equal and opposite demonstration of Newton's third law of motion. Okay, we're going to pause the video. I want to show you one more uh, demonstration of physics at work. And then uh, after that, we'll watch those soda can races today. Okay? And what we're going to look at now is I'm going to take a standard coat hanger. And what I've done is just bent it. I pulled the, this part up to kind of make a, a diamond shape. And I want this loop to be on my finger. I've also bent the hook part of it where it's at an upright 90 degree angle in relationship to the floor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a penny on there and we're going to swing this and the penny is going to balance right here on this hook. Okay? That seems impossible, but let's look at, at if this really can be done. It may take me a few takes to try this and get it right. We'll see if we can do it on the first take. So I'm going to rearrange the camera. 
We're going to zoom up so you can see that the penny's resting on the hook, and then we're going to flip it around and we're going to swing it where the where the penny remains on the hook. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Okay, here's my hanger. What we've done is we basically bent it, and I bent the end so we get that 90 degree angle. And we're going to take and if you notice on the end of the hook, there's nothing there to secure it. It's just simply the um, it's just a regular coat hanger. Okay, we're going to take the penny. I'm going to put the tail side down. It's a lot easier to balance the tail side. Abraham Lincoln on the other side has a lot of curves that are kind of hard to get it to balance. But once we get it on there, sometimes that's the most difficult part. So you can see it resting on the hook. Now we're going to start swinging it, see if we can get it on the first time. There it is. Okay, I'm going to try to slow it down now. See if you can see the penny. There it is. You could hear it fall. If nothing else, you may not have seen it come off. Maybe you could slow it down and watch the video again. But anyway, that's all it is. It's always nice to get that on the first take. And uh, try it at home. You'll, you'll find it pretty interesting. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a lot of fun putting together. Now I want to discuss some of the reasons behind some of the experiments we did today at the labs with physics. Essentially, the coat hanger. Let's talk about it for just a minute. As the coat hanger was swung around, basically my finger acted as the fulcrum on the hanger. Basically, it's the revolving point as the hanger was going around. What was happening is because it's going in a circular motion, we have a force that's called centripetal force, which means a force of things going circular. It's got an outward force always applied to whatever's being uh, involved in that situation. For example, if you were in your car and you were doing a donut in the parking lot, or you turned a corner real fast, you're going to notice that your body wants to fling outward. It's the same situation with something like this. So what's happening is this hanger would love to leave my hand, but because it's got a position around the fulcrum that's attached to my hand, it can't go anywhere other than in a circular motion. So it would love to fly off. Well, the same thing goes. The penny was, was basically um, on this particular part of the hanger, and so when it was being flung around, it was moving along with the uh, hanger. It also has a circular motion attached to it, wanting to make the penny go off in this direction at any given point. If we look at it, if we were to freeze frame the hanger, it wants to go off in a straight line. Well, that penny can't go any further than the tip of this hanger. So the hanger is actually applying an inward force that's equal and opposite to the penny going in the outward force. So in, true, in reality, the penny is balanced, but it is still in a motion because it is being revolved around circularly. But if we freeze frame it or anything like that, we're going to see that the penny is actually in a, in a, 
stop position as it's adhered to the hanger. Okay, so that's why that does its job. Now let's look at the um, static car racers. Okay, balloons uh, are made out of latex, and latex just loves to be rubbed against something that has the ability to charge it. And so uh, that's why if you play around with a lot of balloons, there's a lot of static in the air. And so you're dealing with static electricity, which is also a force. So as you rub this balloon across your hair, what it's doing is it's rubbing the electrons off of your hair and onto the balloon and allowing the, this balloon to become charged. Now remember, electrons are charged negatively. So we surround this balloon with a lot of negative charges. Well, the, the can, the aluminum on the other hand, has not been charged that way. This can, because it's metal, has a lot of protons that are there that are positively charged. And aluminum is a great way to make this work. That's why these cans are so important in this experiment to make it work. And so what happens is when I draw this balloon that has been drawn with, electric, uh, with neutral charges, or electrical charges, I'm sorry, that are negative, it wants, this can, this can desires to be attracted to it. Opposites attract. So in essence, what ha what's happening is that static electricity is creating this force that draws these positive protons towards the negative electrons and causes it to roll. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. It's been a lot of fun putting it together. It's been a lot of fun doing these labs. Have a great day.